Wednesday. It's episode 14 of season 3. It's the first Walking Dead review on the channel that will have Moni Tai Sessioni. Yes. We're uh, back. This episode's called Pray, and we're going to be praying on your money. money. <laughs> the revenue money. We'd it's like to thank YouTube for allowing us back into the partnership, although we've got to say YouTube probably should not have kicked us out the partnership to begin with. But we've buried the hatchet just like a hatchet would be buried into a zombie's head. Us and YouTube, we're all good. We're on the same team. And going forward, we're looking to make money together. Yes, we are. This episode was called Prey and uh, features none of the prison group bar Rick for about 15 seconds at the end of the episode. So if you want at war, you got hee haw. <laughs> yeah, you want a war? Well, not on this show. All you get is talk. Talk, talk, talk. Gosh. Talk, it's even sped up. You got no guts. So, right, Prey, how does it start off? Uh, basically, you've got the governor. The governor building this, like, torture chamber room. He's building like hooks and stuff so and it's after him is showing Andrea a flashback and seeing I say flashback Andrea basically talks like how did you get those two on leads did you know them and then Michonne just stirs in the distance for five minutes she's like sorry and then it shows the governor building the trap obviously well, implying it's well, Michonne what Michonne says is they weren't human to begin with now this would make you believe they've done something really bad but I'm pretty sure I've seen I'm pretty sure they do a future flashback and she's literally Happy with them? I, I I think they just I don't know what happened, but she she said she did say that they weren't human to begin with. So does that mean they'd done something? I'm assuming one of them was her husband and the other one was her brother. I can't remember, but I don't think it was a case of like they both raped her. I can't actually remember. No, because they were thinking we a child. I think maybe they let the the kid died on their watch or something. I think it was something to do with a baby. I think a baby died on their watch. Yeah, I or mean, maybe I, maybe I, like it was zombie, uh, and and they left the baby to die or something. Then Michonne killed them both. I don't know. Have I made this up? Did I dream this or was it a flashback? No, there definitely is. I can remember. Yeah, she's sitting in an apartment or something. I don't know what season. Holding that. a baby with those two. Yeah, I don't. I, I don't. I don't think it's in the next two episodes. No, I don't think it's in the next. I know two we episodes, do get Michonne talking to Merle in the next episode, but I doubt they're going to cover it. It just seems very Michonne heavy. Although, if you would like us to do a theory fed on what happened with Michonne and the two walkers before The Walking Dead started, then... Well, there's not much of a theory of it, tell us and show us. Alright, well, if you'd like us to discuss what happened and whether they right. really were human or unhuman, then we can do that. I love forward. a theory. You love dragging shit out, but I can't do hee haul with Michonne. Why? Because she's a boring bastard, that's why. <laughs> oh, maybe you could make her unboring. Anyway, right, back to the governor. He's got his torture chamber ready. He's got his, like, a, he's got, like, the, um, so he's got chains coming from, like, two metal posts. And then he's got, like, this fucking dentist chair, which I guess is torture on its own. It kind of looks like saw. But, yeah, it looks like he's going to plug someone in or tie someone in or chain someone and whatever. Then he's got a bunch of tools. To be fair, this didn't seem that bad. Like, the tools were, like, mediocre, like, amateur level one tools. One looked like a balloon. Yeah, one looked like a gas mask. <laughs> I guess that maybe that's to try and keep someone alive. I don't know. I, I I've seen worse set up in hostels, like so. Um, yeah, no, nah, I mean it doesn't look that bad. But then Milton comes in and discovers this, and this kind of like puts Milton off. Tries to do a one eighty, but before he can complete his three point turn, the governor's caught up with him. And he's like, "What's wrong, Millie? Why'd you do a one eighty turn there, brother?" What's um, wrong? Milton's then Milton questions the governor. And he's like, "How does this help Woodbury?" Governor's like, "Excuse me." Milton's like, well, we're supposed to be moving forward. We're supposed to survive this. How is torturing someone going to help us survive this? And then the governor's like, you believe there's still something there. A spark, don't you? And Milton goes, yeah, I believe that. And then, because he was talking about Penny. And then the governor's like, well, she killed that, my that was my daughter. And Milton says it doesn't matter. I mean, how does it not matter? Like, I, I, Milton's a smart guy. How the fuck does it not matter? Like, let's be real, you can kind of clearly tell that the whole reason the governor and him were trying these experiments was solely for his daughter, basically. I obviously would help them in the long term, but that's why the governor was so adamant about it, yes? Yeah, I doubt he'd have been And then Milton says to Andrew, literally in the scene after, oh, I knew him before this. Yes, Therefore, he knew him, he knew his family, he knew his daughter, what the fuck are you doing, Milton? Plus, Milton out of everybody seems to believe the most that there's still something there. Yeah. So therefore, he should probably be the person, obviously... 
apart from the governor, because it's his daughter. Like, but he should be against what Michonne done. He should probably be... I'm not saying he should want full out revenge, like, but he should be sympathising, I think, with the governor and understanding why the governor is so hell-bent on revenge. But he turns around here and says it doesn't matter. Well, I mean, I think it does matter. Yeah, I, I don't... I mean, Milton, who's been a shite bag this entire series, this season, why all of a sudden is he, like... Yeah, out of nowhere this episode, he found a set of balls, man, and he's, he's questioning the governor... Uh, then he has he has a meet sitting. I mean, literally, he leaves. Then straight away, he's in this alleyway talking to Andrea, telling Andrea that what the governor's got in store. Then he takes Andrea to see the the trap. They're like looking down from a balcony. Uh, Milton says that she's got to leave and get to the prison. But then she says, "Oh, you could kill him." He's like, "Oh, you'll never get to him. You'll never get in between him and his guards. They'll drop you." Then they get the perfect opportunity. What's Milton do? No, Mel <laughs> Milton takes the gun away. But what's he on about? You'll never get close to him. I mean, at this stage, Andrea and the governor are sleeping together. The governor does not know Andrea wants to kill him or anything. How could Andrea not get close to him? Well, let's just say she couldn't, right? Is this not the perfect opportunity where he sits down, she's got the gun pointed at him, and Milton's like, no. I guess so, but uh, I mean, maybe from there you could miss. Even if you hit, it's not like a hit, it's not like a you know fatal shot. Hold on, he's sitting in a chair. Then he's got a full, fully loaded pistol. If you miss with twelve bullets, you need fucking shot. It's not Tyrese aiming through the window. Um, it's, oh, Shane trained Andrea. She knows. What she's oh, well, Shane trained her. She'd have got him. Like, but then again, she'd be trapped in Woodbury. How would she get out? You know. So yeah, but we know where he gets shot from. Oh, well, that's true, actually. And he's in like deep in his dungeon, where the fuck it is. And no one even knows that place exists. So who's gonna find him? Exciting. Well, in that case, Andrea should have took the shot. But then Milton brings up the point of, even if we kill him, this war will still go on. Martinez will take... I doubt it. If you kill the governor, man, the, the war is de-escalated so much. I, 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 he doesn't give a fuck about Michonne. I mean, I, yeah, I doubt if the governor dies, I doubt Martinez is like, right, guys, let's go. We're going to the prison tomorrow. You know, I, I don't think that's going to happen. So I think it would. I think I, I agree it would have de-escalated. And... I mean, who knows? I mean, I'm not saying... Martinez would have just completely forgot about it because the prison group know where they are. As far as Martinez, Martinez is concerned, he might think the prison group's still unsafe and full of murderers and killers. So I don't think he'd have totally just, you know, forgot about them. But yeah, I think the urgency would have been gone and I'm not sure they'd have been going to war the next day. So I mean. uh, Definitely. Uh, Andrea, then... Goes to one of the walls after getting her firearm took off her by Martinez. No, the carry. We all need the boom. And she wants her, her knife as well. I mean, like, what the fuck? I know you could argue, well, you're safe inside the walls, so you don't really need your weapons, but that just seems weird in my opinion. What happened? So if Rick and his group launch another attack and all the guns were what the governor wanted them? Yeah, exactly. When you put it like that, like, shouldn't the people capable of using the guns have guns on them? And again, at this stage, there's no reason for them to suspect Andrea, so it just doesn't make a lot of sense why... So did, had, uh, see, by this stage, had Martinez hand over his gun? Was he walking about the streets of Woodbury when he went? I think it's different. He's lieutenant, isn't he, or whatever. Whatever, man. He's lieutenant. But then she talks to Tyrese Those Mexicans and Sasha. stealing fucking Merrill's job. No wonder the white people... God damn it. Yeah. Andrea then says to them, I use her wanted to some other wall. I'll guard this wall. You aren't you a good shot? Oh, you know what? Fuck it. I just want over the wall. I need to go back to Rick's people. The governor's not what he is, brother. Yeah, so Tyrese and Sasha won't leave like, ah, oh, well, you got to bring the governor here. We can't leave her spot. Andrea's like, got no time for this. Tries to escape. Um, Tyrese's like, yeah, we can't let you leave. Then she pulls a knife on him that Martinez never got off her, I guess. Then she goes, yo, the, the governor, he's dangerous. And then she leaves, and that's that. That's pretty much it. Andrea's on the run back to the prison. Meanwhile, the governor and Martinez question Tyrese and Sasha, why did you let Andrea leave? Uh, Tyrese says that she was, like, shaken up, blah, 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 and, and all this stuff. And then the governor just... Poof. Well, thank God, he's weren't hurt. <laughs> right. What a guy, like, eh? <sighs> It's okay. He's a five-dollar winner, man. We got it. Yeah. What? What? Well, we got her in the winter. She's all, we, we have to save her. Aye, uh, what are you on a bit? That's what I'm on a bit. Uh, his whole sob story. He can go from fucking Heel 101 to 
the the most lovable guy ever. Can't yeah, but they're on a bit. Oh, she seemed like all right to me. And then he's like, no, she's too far gone. She was in the winter all by herself. And he's purposely going to go after her one on one. And this is when he confronts Milton, and then he quickly discovers that Milton and Andrea have had conversations. And he's like, ah, oh, fuck. Like you knew. And he throws Milton up against the wall. I mean, Milton kind of just seen this episode. Like Milton just. It's almost like he's, ask, he's asking to like get found out here. This was the first time he approached the governor and brought up shit that the governor likely wouldn't have found out if he never mentioned it first. I mean, the go- Milton comes up and like essentially puts his mouth in it, his foot in his mouth when he t- asks the governor, so she left and all this stuff. And he wouldn't know, because no, I mean. Well, how would he know? Exactly, and then again, later on in the episode, something happens. That, fuck, what happened there? Of course he knew. Uh, Governor then takes off in hot pursuit in his big uh, pickup truck. It's got armour, it's got a tow hang at the front of it. Uh, what's that guy called? He's talking to Tyrese. David, is that, is that, is that his name? I think so. Uh, he's talking to Tyrese. Basically, it seems to be an occasion where uh, Donna, if, if you remember who that is, that's his wife who Tyrese once rescued. And he Basically, holds. as soon as we've seen her, she got bit in the our first yeah. ever scene. So I mean, <laughs> But he holds it against Tyrese that he saved, saved her. I'm going to... It sounds like she kissed him or something. Ah, and he's been forever... Maybe it's just more of, oh, fuck, he saved that time when she get bit. I couldn't do anything. Or maybe it was that, but I thought by the way they were talking, like... You cause... embarrassed me in front of my son. Yeah, it doesn't sound like you saved his mother. But... His son looks like a freak, to be fair. Yeah, like, his son looks like he's about 18, but they're treating him like he's about 10. Yeah. Don't know what's going on, but uh, Martinez says he's going to use all four of them for a job. They go out for the job. The job is collecting walkers. Um, David then says he's going to keep his son safe. We do not agree with you, Tyrese. And then Tyrese's like, yeah, just like you kept Donna safe. We scuffle Tyrese about to throw him into the walker pit. No, I'm no doing it. And then Martinez is like, you know what, actually? Six-person job. It's a one-man job. I'll do all this walker yes, shit. Sends them all home. <clears throat> sends them all home. Home to Woodbury tells uh, Schubert to let them knit for the day. But, I mean, I was kind of on Team Tyrese here. I think he's been a good guy up until, but the kind of, oh, you're going to keep her him safe like you kept on it. That was a kind of a low blow. Like, I, that didn't seem Tyrese like, but then again, David has been pushing him a lot this episode, so I guess that's Tyrese just, you know, fighting back like, but I felt it was a bit of a low blow. Definitely, but at the same time, like, why does Tyrese need these two? Well, he does. It seems like they constantly butt heads. Yeah, they survived the gather, but like realistically, if that guy wants to stay there with his son, fucking let him. True, true. I mean, he's all grown adults, like. I know, I think it's just... Uh, I, I mean, yeah, Andrea and Michonne came together and left together. So, I mean, left without each other. So. Yeah. Just because you arrived somewhere as a group doesn't necessarily mean that... Or just because you are in a group doesn't mean you need to stay in a group forever. I mean, it doesn't work that way. So Exactly, but... Back to Andrea, I want to return to Michonne, and she wants to reunite with the prison group. The governor chases her down, there's a bit of, like, f- like, we're in the middle of the field, he chases her for about 10 seconds, and all of a sudden she gets to some trees. How quick can she run? Very quick. I mean, like, I know the governor's objective here ain't just to fucking mow her down at 100 miles an hour, else he would have done it. But, yeah, he wants to capture her, I guess, but... Yeah, but he, he, he eventually falls her to this, like, old warehouse or something, and then basically we get, like, a 10-minute, like, you know, Michael Myers esque sort of thing. Yeah, Andrea's like running through this abandoned like warehouse with walkers and stuff and it broken glass chains and the governor's just like slowly like falling or walking down and stuff and I mean it was it was good, I liked it. It was definitely a, a horror feel element to it. Yeah. I mean some intimidating eerie music like it You was. know what? It, it saves this episode from being like dangerously low. Yeah, no, I, I actually let... No, this is the first time The Walking Dead's felt horror for me in a long time. Yeah, like, I, I feel they've like when, when, they, when they went into the prison at first and they're going through the dark alleyways, yeah, and dark corridors, I felt like that was definitely horror. Yeah. I mean, that is, though, about ten episodes ago, like, more at this point. But, yeah, basically, he corners her eventually, um, but she's... But literally, there was a scene when she was hiding from him in the trees where she gets grabbed from behind... And then two walkers come out from the front. So the one walker's got her from behind, and the two walkers are literally, you know, right on top of her. And there's like three walkers on her, and she just manages to, like, you know, get them off easily. And it's like that. Ki- it takes away the horror element when one person can just, like, kill three walkers easy. See if. Suck, see if fucking. What's the, what's the girl called in Halloween? 
Say that. Laurie Stroot, Laurie Stroot or something. No, the main character. Laurie Stroot. Lodi. Something like that. Laura, Laura. I don't know. Right, let's go with Laura. If Halloween was fucking over. Right, I don't let, know let, let's let's say every time Michael Myers approached Laurie, she could just like drop kick the guy and he flew to her feet away. And no, but listen, she Mike, could beat him up easily. If you Michael hold... Myers wouldn't be a threat, therefore he wouldn't have the same horror element. Aye, but right, the she's... reason why it's a threat is because Michael Myers has got like fucking. It seems like he's got superhuman powers and he can literally just crush people. I but see here, right? She's holding off two walkers with her knee, and then there's one walker from behind the tree that's grabbed her. And she can't get it off. Are you trying to tell me you can't grab a walker, one armed walker, with? two hands but you can hold off two of them with your fucking knee I know but do you agree that the fact that the walkers don't feel dangerous it just takes away the horror element yeah I know and that, talk, that takes us to the next scene like they're in the warehouse the governor corners her but Andrea's like set a trap so she kind of like hides behind the door and it allows all the walkers to pile in now the governor's surrounded he's got walkers in front of him walkers behind him there must have been about 15 20 walkers here and you knew he wasn't going to die. And it's a closed, like, conf confined, like, area. And the governor takes care of them. Like, yeah, the governor makes noise, like, but... See when Andrea hides behind the door, like, why is, like, not one of the walkers, like, trying to get at her? Because the glass was broke as well. They're not see her, they're not smell her. I mean, it just... Yeah, contradicting here, but she escapes, and then it's daylight. She's at the prison. She's safe. Rick looks through his scope. She's no safe. The governor grabs her just before Rick sees our brother. And then Rick looks on into the, the woods and the forest and the trees, but he doesn't see any. He doesn't even see Laurie. He sees absolutely nothing. Rick gets treated here like he's a red shirt with a sniper. Yeah. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> <laughs> no, but see, that's the first episode of The Walking Dead you've watched. You're probably thinking, oh, fuck is that? Is that fucking depressing looking uh, That guy will probably be killed off in the next scene. <laughs> it's literally Rick like, but if, you, if, if this is your first time watching it, I mean, li Rick literally gets treated like an absolute nobody. Just some guy on post here. That's it. I'm on post. Like a wee postman, Rick man. I was going to say they could have used someone else, but who else do they fucking have? I mean, what red shirts do they have at this stage? None. Fucking hell. Tell me about it. Could have used Axel. He'd be dead. Well, a few of them, man. Uh, he classifies red shirts to me like that. Uh, they are holding guns just when they fucking feel right with it. I guess because Rick's the main. But you know, why is Rick the main man on lookout for fuck's sake? I mean, I know, but would it, see if it was like Carol or Beth, would you not be like, why the fuck have they got them on lookout? I mean, that's true. Rick's the star part, I guess. That's what but the is. governor isn't on lookout at Woodbury, is he? No, he's not. Like, is he? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? He's got every cunt on the wall apart from the governor. Every job are imaginable. Ah, yeah, at the prison, Rick's one man army. I mean, the governor, uh, he returns to Woodbury. He must have captured Andre. I mean, so he, what did he do? Did he grab? Did he drag Andrea the whole way back to the warehouse? I mean, the car and his mouth, or mouth closed. The car and her mouth. <laughs> I, I don't know. But anyway, he gets back. She must be in the boot or something. He, he's bloody faced. He tells everybody, "Ah, she got away. He'll go look tomorrow." Then he, he's confronted by Tyrese. Tyrese says, "Look, I know you've got a problem with the prison group, etc. But uh, we ain't feeding the guys kids to walkers, biters." Then the governor again just plays it cool. He's like, "No, we use it as an intimidation." Scare tactic. We ain't feeding anyone to the walkers. <laughs> then Tyrese kind of gets on board a bit. Sasha's like, well, why didn't your guy just say that? It's like, uh, we don't discuss tactics with uh, black people. <laughs> New people. <laughs> New people. Sorry. That's what I meant. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what um, about Schubert? <laughs> Schubert he's at Schubert's on a need-to-know basis. And then, uh, yeah, so then Milton pro approaches the governor... Uh, Ty Ty Tyrese's team's back in bed with the governor. Milton's like, it's a shame about. It's a wee bit. Milton just randomly walks up to him. It's a shame about what happened to the fucking virus. <laughs> <laughs> Could you make it any more fucking obvious? It was you, man. And then yeah, the governor's like, I know. And then Milton's like, I hope you find out who did it. And then the, the governor's like, already know. Then he walks off. Then we get some like theme play that. Uh, it's just sticks it like a sore thumb. The Walking Dead. Yeah, it's just not. It's not really a Walking Dead song. I mean, it's pretty good, like, but it's not really a Walking Dead song. And then it kind of like takes you down this corridor, and then a door opens, and you see Andrea trapped in the dentist chair. Probably wishes she was going to the dentist, and not many times you'd say that, but she's stuck in the chair. She's pray for the governor, I guess, and uh, we'll find out what happens next episode, or will we? No, we won't, because none of this shit. Gets revealed in the next episode. But there you go, that's Ooh. how this show ended. That's how the episode ended. Show ended, I'm about 30. But, 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 one of our episodes too early. Anyway, I, I'm going to give this a 6. 
Yeah. Even that much. It's a high. No, he has six. Seems a bit high to me. I'm going to get a... It's getting a five for me. Five and a half. I mean, you know what? Looking back, I thought season three was where it was at. You know what? I take it back. 12-year-old Steve thought it was a lot better than 21-year-old Steve, and that's pretty much what we're going to... But I can totally understand that, because, I mean, it is more action-packed. Like, I mean, I can get it. See if you're into action. It's like... But it doesn't make any sense because, like, if if we use like well, obviously a, watching it and reviewing it, and like, you've reviewed stuff now for a while, you, there's just so many holes to pick in this. Yeah, like the pacing's a fucking mess. Milton going for the smartest guy at Woodbury to the dumbest fucking dumb. <laughs> Like within like a day, a day, it just makes no sense. Like you know, um, a guy that's kept his mouth shut, right? Won't fucking speak up, man, if the governor pissed in his mouth all of a sudden. Now fucking he's re- fucking over the governor and letting him know about it. I mean, hey, did you enjoy that shit in your cornflakes, governor? It was me. <laughs> I did a number two. It was this guy. It was really. Right, anyway, right, five and a half out of ten, closing thoughts, pray. Uh, closing, pray. So, I mean, it was all right, like, but I, I just feel like not enough happened for it to be like a, a Woodbury exclusive episode, could you not give us some prison scenes? Could we not have got Meryl for fuck's sake? I liked it, but I, I just think it would have been better if we got interaction for both sides. And the Michonne flashback done nothing for me. N- nothing? Literally nothing? No, absolutely nothing. Like, uh, all it did was kind of remind you. Oh, remember she Michonne used to, and I used to have those two walkers or whatever? Right. I mean. Oh, no, that's it. So, uh, yeah, five out of ten, two more episodes to go. Five and, and a half out of ten. Uh, five and a half out of ten, two more episodes to go in season three. Um, oh, uh, by the way, there'll be a new schedule coming next week as well. So, instead of random Walking Dead uploads, you're going to be getting the... Uh, Walking Dead Wednesdays. And we'll maybe add a second day because I've got a shitload of these episodes uh, to get through. So, Grimes Friday? <sighs> no. The Governor Thursdays? <laughs> Fellow Thursdays. Merle Mondays. <laughs> yeah, he's only got <laughs> here. He's only got one Monday left. One episode left. Ah, Fucking may as well be. Can't be him. May as well be Monday, right? Anyway, that's it. Five and a half out of ten. Peace.